Released on July 26, 1985, this adaptation of Lloyd Alexander's The Chronicles of Prydain was a commercial and critical flop considered to be the low point in the Disney company. After this, the Disney renaissance began to form. Besides a video game and a theme park reference, this 25th film in the Disney canon has mostly been buried, only with a small cult fan base. It first hit home video in the U.S. on August 4th, 1998, and for the purpose of this podcast, we watched the 4K edition available for streaming on Disney+. Hi, I'm Justin, and across from me is Stella, and this is a discussion on Walt Disney's The Black Cauldron. gonna be like the main character and have my voice slowly drop as we're going along like start out hello 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 this is the black (laughs) cauldron why is there nothing that shows up on the internet about that i swear it is not the same people or if it is they edited the crap out of it's possible they edited it i could see them going in there and editing the voice but halfway through or it could be like it could even be an issue with the sound mixing it could be so many things because it, it's slightly different, but it's not enough to make me think like it's a different voice or a different. I don't know. It's not the same. You ever actually the Sword in the Stone, the main character of that movie, his voice literally is completely different at different times. Not like halfway through the movie, but like at different times. It's, Why? I think I don't. I think like the main character's voice actor was going through puberty at the time. Or maybe they did reshoots uh, of the voices later, like they did some... So they did it out of, like, different scenes at different times? I think they might have did some re-recordings after, or it's possible they used two different actors, um, but it's just ridiculous, and it makes me think, how did no one notice this, and why didn't they just take the time to do another recording? Like, I don't know. Or uh, edit it or something, <laughs> I don't know. There's got to be something. Um, well, we'll watch that one eventually, and- Get when we when we get to it, mm-hmm. um, well, this is gonna be the episode now on the Black Cauldron, by far Disney's most popular film. <laughs> oh. I would, you know what? Um, me and Stella both have never seen this, which was making this experience a little more interesting. All the other movies we've watched so far, we've seen, and we've mm-hmm. seen a lot of the Disney animated classics. Um, we haven't really gotten to ones that we both haven't seen. So there's only. A few you haven't seen. There's more that I haven't than than you haven't. The ones that I haven't seen, uh, well, I think it was about five of them, and one of them you've seen. So it was very few, but I know The Black Cauldron was one of them. And I didn't really have a reason to keep holding off on it. I did. It scared me. Okay. So you actually had tried to watch this before. No, so. the cover scared me. <laughs> <laughs> did you, you said you, I thought you said you watched this as a kid, or tried to, like the beginning of it. I I said that, but I don't know if I did, because he doesn't show up for a long time, so maybe I didn't. I feel... I don't know. I feel like I did. The only thing I remember about this movie before recent years with the internet and more Disney knowledge, the only contact I ever had with the movie was one of my uh, friends had it, and they really loved the movie and would watch it like all the time. But I wasn't. I it wasn't like a close friend. It wasn't someone whose house I'd be at all the time. They owned the movie though, and it would always be on at their house. Apparently, I would like it, but like, like it that much even. What I, the heck? Yeah, they. It might have been like a fantasy thing. I could see kids mm-hmm. who love fantasy maybe liking it, but that was the first time I saw that the VHS even existed, or that the movie even existed, and then never saw really anything else about it until years later. Even finding a VHS of it was very hard. You don't find them commonly I in. We might have one. Well, you're one of the few. I had to buy mine online um, when I was trying to get all the Disney masterpiece collections. Um, because. Hey, 
Well, yeah, I would, but it's too late. Um, <laughs> but the, no, the issue was I couldn't find it in the store because I think that few people actually bought it. And they waited a long time to release it. I mean, the movie came out in 85. They didn't release the VHS until 1998. And that was like the one time they actually released it on home video. Because then they wouldn't release it again until 2009 for a DVD. And, and they're they, still not for the Blu-ray. And there's still no Blu-ray. Uh, the movies we'll be talking about on this podcast, I have collected every single one of them on Blu-ray. But there are three movies that don't have a Blu-ray release. One of them is Make My Music. The other one is Melody Time. Those are both package films from the 1940s, so I kind of understand. And then The Black Cauldron, which is really weird. Do you think they know it sucks? <laughs> Disney knows it sucks. Yeah. I think um, the issue is, too, that they haven't tried to revitalize it at all. I think there's, like... I think Disney has a method of making some of their bad products that existed in the past kind of have a resurgence, and people, like, love them with a nostalgic touch. So... I mean, even with Disney+, Plus, so many of these crappy Disney Channel movies, people are suddenly talking about, like, oh, I remember that, I love that, and they're watching it again, even though a lot of it's not very good now, Mm -mm. or was then. Um, I feel like The Black Cauldron could have, it could work the same way, but yet here we are. It still hasn't been released, and I can imagine they're taking the numbers from how the DVD sold, and they're like, it's not worth it. Um... Disney Plus does have a 4K version of it. It's cleaned up. It's really... I mean, it looks good. I mean, I mean, well, we'll, well. get into you know the animation portion of it. I'm saying like it looks like a cleaned up movie, though. It doesn't look yeah. rough. Or some of these movies on Disney Plus look a little rougher. Uh, but this one actually has had a cleanup job. I'm guessing from when they released the DVD. Um, and there probably was a high-quality version that was even, you know, better than the DVD that was already done. I like to think that they haven't released the Blu-ray because there is a unedited version of this movie somewhere out there. I don't know if it's in the Disney archives or what, but this movie was very famous. The year it was released was the year they hired Katzenberg uh, and Michael Eisner to the company. And the first thing Katzenberg did was he went and edited the black cauldron and it wasn't before any of the animation was still being put together no it was like late in the game like music had already been put in the movie and they literally chopped it out where like the music's cut in the movie that's what i was trying to listen for while we were watching it i wanted to see if there was a little cut in music that you could very easily tell Mm -hmm. i didn't notice it there's not very much music in it anyway like background well uh, there a little bit when it when they're at the when they're at the castle, there is, but I kind of get what you mean. There's, like, some gaps, like, when they're visiting the witches or they're with those fairies where there's just no music, and mm-hmm. it's honestly kind of awkward because mm-hmm. it doesn't really fill the void with voices either. It's, like, one voice in this really empty area, and you feel like it should be echoey, and yeah. it's, like... <laughs> I, I'd like to see it hit Blu-ray just because I'd like to finish my collection, mm-hmm. but I didn't go buy the DVD because screw it. <laughs> I'm waiting until the Blu-ray... It, you know what? It took... Volume 4 of DuckTales, it took them 10 years to get to it. But they went... They finally did it, so that tells me anything's possible. What do you mean? This is like 20 years. I know. That's the good point. <laughs> well, it's I mean... 21. It's been... Ten, it's been about... It's been a decade since the DVDs come out, so... I'm still thinking it could happen, but... <sighs> we finally watched it. We... This is the first time both of us have seen it. What did you think... Of the Black Cauldron. It was not good. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't great. No. It wasn't very good. No, it was very... The characters sucked, and it was very boring and very slow, and there was no point to any of it until, like, the end. And it still sucked. hmm I was wondering if I'd be an outsider on this one. I thought... There was a chance I'd be like, no, I feel like everyone hates this movie, and I will be the one that likes it. We didn't. You didn't know anything about it, did you? I didn't. I didn't have like any expectations, so it's not like, oh, everybody else says it sucks. I'm gonna hate it too. Like I knew nothing about it, and I still don't like it. <laughs> I feel like the barometer for bad Disney movies. 
I never agree with anyway. Like, yeah. if you take the Rotten Tomatoes, which is, like, the worst thing to take, but if you take their scores and put them in order of best to worst, their worst-rated film on there is, the, is Brother Bear, which I don't I agree with at all. Movie. Yeah, I don't agree with that at all. I think that movie is actually fine. What um, are the some, like, worst-rated... Chicken Little's rated princess, badly. Princess movies. Um, the worst-rated Princess movie? I don't know. They all do pretty well. <laughs> yeah. I would... I'd have to think about that Probably one. like Princess and the Frog. I think it'd be... I think it's Sleeping Pocahontas. Beauty. I think Pocahontas is the She's worst one. She's not a princess. Well, then fine. It's <laughs> probably like one of the more recent ones, uh, like Mulan. It, it probably would be like Mulan's one of those. Mulan's not a princess either. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? I said she's not a princess either. Well, yeah, they, they're considered Disney princesses. Well, I don't. well that's you. Well, you are wrong. not the company. <laughs> they're not princesses. Well, the ones you're talking about then are just the good princesses, and that wasn't the argument. Yeah, but um, I I don't know. I don't know if people really like Sleeping Beauty that much. It's got really good reviews. Really. But I I kind of agree. I think. It's weird because some of these movies have good reviews, but I feel like it's for completely different reasons. But all those movies that we listed have other reasons to like it. This movie doesn't have anything. Like, there's not, like, really mu I was thinking even at first, I was like, the animation's really going to keep me interested in this movie. But it really the doesn't. The clouds. Or the real clouds. <laughs> the real clouds. Whatever Which was. kind of, for being an animated movie, then look fake. <laughs> Are they actually real? Yeah, that was straight up real footage. There was no way those were. That was just someone went outside, filmed clouds, or they had stock footage of clouds, and they changed the colors of them, and then boom, that's better than doing an actual background for the movie. And then we make the characters look like actual cardboard. Count how many times his hair changes. <laughs> I don't know what anybody's names are. I well, already forgot. Well, they couldn't. They didn't keep up with the color temperatures of this movie at all. Uh, the characters' names, we'll, we'll get into them. But, yeah. Characters the weren't good. Mm -hmm. There wasn't really music that was good. There wasn't the songs. No. Which I felt like at the opening scene when he's just kind of laudled all, you know, just not doing anything. I was like, I feel like there should be a song here, but this movie's not a musical, so mm -hmm. it doesn't know what to do. Well, I would have <laughs> made it actually worse. <laughs> I feel like if the songs know. were good, it would have improved but it, they but wouldn't have been good. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if I trust them to make good songs. <laughs> no. Well, not for this movie. Yeah, I was just kind of disappointed that I was hoping there'd be something in it that would make me an outside opinion, maybe part of that small fan base that actually digs this movie, and I was not. We did not read the Chronicles of Pradane, and I'm not going to. I don't... <laughs> I've also heard the author himself said there it's nothing like the books. Mm. He actually did like the movie. He uh, there is um, a quote from him from a, from the time it was released. He did like the movie, but he's like, but it's not a Chronicles of Pradane movie as just a movie. He liked it, but not really as an adaptation. He's like, yeah. he was like, I hope people still read the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, movie got good reviews uh, from Roger Ebert at the time. It actually kind of has a sort of fifty fifty opinion. Um, for critics overall but I think a lot of that's the animation and the darker tone which was I guess ahead of its time in the 80s for Disney mm. but there was like there was like a thing at the time where they were trying to make a lot of kids movies a little darker and I'm like who was in charge like who this is scary yeah, it can be at times the very end is scary. Yeah, I think. Like, this was the same time that uh, Return to Oz was released by Disney. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> Which is weird. Thank God we don't have to watch that movie. Because well, I'm never watching that You want to throw this into this podcast, even no, though it has nothing never. to do with the Disney you animated films? You couldn't pay me. <laughs> I had nightmares for weeks. Oof. Well, let's hope this movie doesn't give you nightmares. Let's hope. It wasn't that... I was actually surprised it wasn't nearly as dark as I thought it would be. I don't know if I'm like no, I thought it would be it. more too, but it's still scary. Like at the end, yeah, with the horned king and his all enchantments. The, all the skeletons are yucky. It's funny because I've seen footage from it in documentaries and in uh, various YouTube clips, and it, I've always seen that the scenes where they bring those skeletons back to life, and they're always like, "It's a dark movie," and I'm like, "It must be." And then that's like the only scene. I'm like, "Well, the cover even looks yucky." Right. And I'm like, "Well, you can't, you can't take the one scene that's scary and then say the whole movie's scary." It's like because you only he's in it kind of from the beginning, but you don't you see him for like two seconds. Mm -hmm. 
and then it's just yeah i don't know yeah not not nearly as dark but i can see why it was so it was kind of controversial in a way because um when they did like a test screening of it like children are running out of the theater oh. but that was before they edited it so i don't know how bad that stuff is Ew, but i feel yes. like i feel like it's what we see in the movie but just extended longer you want to know the character's name z no i don't it's funny because i went to look up how to pronounce the term predane uh just to make sure I say it correctly. Like the book? Uh, yeah. Oh. And they actually had on their website a list for pronouncing everybody's name. And I was like, wow. So it was oh. that kind of book where... <laughs> so they did they take the characters' names from the book? I think some of them. But it, apparently the book had such confusing names and then this movie did the same thing. Why um, do people do that in a book? Like, just don't. <laughs> just do, like, Tom and bill and yeah. i'll remember <laughs> the main character's name was taryn you know uh change when the do they around. even say that i've heard it like at the very end but they don't say it ever in the beginning uh, taryn has friends <laughs> oh, yeah oh yuck don't like that <laughs> taryn was um how do i explain this he is the worst main like character ever made yeah he's awful he's the worst non-hero Ever. I'm a hero. I'm a hero. I'm a cool. Doesn't do anything. <laughs> the sword. The sword was literally flying on its own, and he's like, I'm a hero now. I'm like, actually. And he's like a little a hole yeah. to the girl. Uh-huh. Uh, and about it. Like, he's like, I'm a hero. What'd you do? And I'm like, What did you do? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, it was annoying that the sword had magic powers because I was like, Oh, great. Now he'll actually have a reason to be a hero. Are you kidding me? Because mm-hmm. this dude goes around, he's acting like he wants to be brave and prove his worth to people. Very compelling, you know, because that's how you make the character's wants and needs very compelling by him just saying it. That's fine. You can do that. But he said it every two minutes but it doesn't make anything interesting about him it's no. kind of like you know like sometimes it works you take but... bell in beauty and the beast yeah. and she wants to go great adventure beyond that somewhere and she but we show that she's really interested in the gadgets with her dad and she does the reading and she interacts with the townspeople even though they kind of are weird towards her but she's nice you know there's a lot of personality in those first couple minutes mm-hmm. in this movie the first couple minutes is him walking outside the house and then talking to an old man and then talking to the pig and then talking to an old man i'm gonna be a hero i'm like we're 10 minutes in i don't know anything about you like mm-hmm. he <laughs> messes up everything Every single thing he touches, he just trips, he, he knocks it over. He's very full of himself for not really doing much, but he expects the world. You know what he is? He's an incel. That's what he is. 100%. He was, he is the term incel before it was created. Are you serious? Maybe it was made before Twitter, but I don't know. I don't know what that word means. <laughs> I've never even heard it. But. Uh, he's just... And then when he gets the sword, though, I was like, okay, now he's going to have an excuse, I guess to be a hero because the sword does all the work and you know what he does Hmm. gives it up i'm like are you serious this is this is our main hero everybody so i don't i don't get the whole reason he was going after what is it something king the horned king yeah okay because he wanted his pig back but then somebody else had his pig like those fairy things Mm mm-hmm why do, was he still going after the cauldron? No, he wanted to destroy the cauldron at that point. But well, then just he found worry out. about your pig. Well, he, <laughs> he was at first, but it, the story did kind of change. He wanted to then destroy the cauldron. He but, should not be the one to do that. No, he shouldn't. But, of course, this man is like, I can do anything. This man. man. Boy. Yeah. Pig boy. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he wanted to destroy the cauldron then. Mm-hmm. But his whole purpose originally was to just run away with the pig. Yeah, but the king still didn't know where it was. The pig? The cauldron, because they lost the pig. That's a so good he point. had no way well, of getting it. He I don't didn't think know he where knew. He didn't know that he couldn't destroy the cauldron until he had the cauldron, because the witches tricked him, kind of. Yeah, but I mean, he could have just. Uh, left it at that. The boy could have just left it be because the king didn't have the cauldron. He, he didn't know just how to get it. He buried it again. The cauldron. He could have just been like, put it back in the dirt. could have done a lot of things. And this kid could have just not. Give up the sword. He could have just done nothing, which yeah. is pretty much what he did. Mm-hmm. You know, then we uh, we meet the, um, pr- what's her name? Princess Ellen Way. Ellen Way. Ellen Way? She's a princess. Yeah. She's 
doesn't look princess, like a princess. Doesn't do much. And pig boy. Isn't it amazing that she like as a princess also doesn't do anything? And I know that's kind of typical in these Disney yeah. films. It's like the funny trope about them. Like these princesses, they don't do anything. They don't talk. This one is also just very bland, and even her design, mm-hmm. which I, which him too. I was like, you know, they look uh, very nice looking, but my god, are they the most bland characters I've ever seen on my planet. Like, (laughs) she shows up and, yeah, she just kind of doesn't do anything either. But Her her little light thing disappeared halfway through, too. I forgot about that. What is that called? It was like her bubble, her orb, her... Something. The Horned King thought the orb would be able to help him find the cauldron, so that's why he captured her. Mm -hmm. And then when it didn't... He kept her. Yep. Alive. Very dastardly villain, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, we have Gurgi. Yuck. Who that just... sounds like you're choking that name. Gurgi! Ew. That's how he talks. Yeah. At this point, I'm like, there's too many characters because they're all boring and old don't have man a personality. In the beginning, and then another old man and then and who looks like the other old man. Yeah. <laughs> and well, you know what's funny about Gurgi though is like when he shows up and just disappears, which which when he showed up I called him he's just Gollum with hair. That's all he is. <laughs> but he like disappears and I, I was like is that it? You know what he looks like? I was trying to figure out that whole time. He looks like Max from Little Mermaid, the dog. But, like, in human form. Yeah, and smaller. <laughs> but kept the hair. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that was made after this movie, so maybe they just took that design and put it on four legs, and a, there mean, you go. It's a real dog. Um, I don't think they designed it. Whatever. One of the <laughs> most um, groundbreaking scenes is when Gurgi commits suicide. Yikes. <laughs> that was weird. I know it was meant to be, like, a sacrifice, like he sacrificed yeah, himself. Yeah, that was it was very sad how they did it. Like, and not in like a, oh, I'm going to miss Gurgi. Because Gurgi at this point has like five minutes of screen time. I don't know anything about Gurgi. He says, I have no friends and jumps off. I'm like, oh my gosh. He does. He's like, Taryn has lots of friends. I have no one. <laughs> and I'm like, yes. oh, And he terrible. just kills himself. And for some reason they, oh God, you know what? I, the, the weird thing is, is that the movie wraps up. Because when he well when they get captured again and brought back to the castle, mm-hmm. only a few minutes after escaping the castle, I was like, "Why are we doing this?" But I realized we're at the end of the movie, so I was like, no, "Okay, they're just thirteen minutes well, left." We'll get to that because they're like, "We're we're we're getting things going." I'm like, "Okay, the movie's almost done," and you know the whole thing happens. They destroy the Horn King's castle and they escape, and then the movie keeps going. And I'm like, and they had the big moment where Gurgi sacrifices himself, and you know these kids movies, it's either. They'll bring the character back to life, or they'll leave him dead. And this movie kind of made it very apparent that that's not going to happen. Like, the character is going to die. Mm-hmm. And I kind of accepted that. And to be honest, for a movie that sucks and really isn't that ground ba- you know, groundbreaking at all, I thought it was going to be kind of ballsy for them to do that. I was like, oh, they're actually going to kill one of the main characters that we didn't really learn about. But main. still, yeah. in theory, this is ballsy. And the movie kind of just keeps going after that. And then they run into the witches again. I'm like, this is a very strange epilogue. Like, a ten minute epilogue of them talking to the witches again. Even though they've already saved the day. I'm like, what is going on? And that's when I realized they're bringing Gurgi back. But why did that still have to be so long? Exactly. There was a lot of parts that were just so long for no reason. Like, when he first meets him. And it's just hard the to apple. care. <laughs> It's hard to care about this character and some of these characters because they don't you don't learn anything about them. I don't care about any of this. <laughs> um, the Horned King, who is kind of the one very much praised thing in this movie because he is a very creepy looking dude. Uh, his opening scene where he just talks to himself, <laughs> he's very boring. Yeah, and I was like. Our villain, everyone. He repeated himself. Like, he said it all over again, and I was like, oh. Mm-hmm. And it just, the screen fades away, and I'm like, that was the villain, I guess. Yep. It's very weird, because he's very darkly lit, so you don't really get a grasp on what he actually looks like until you get towards the end of the movie. Yeah. But he is a creepy-looking dude, like... I, I didn't get why they did that. They, like, 
I get in the beginning they don't want to show what he looks like, but then they did that a few times, like back and forth after we already seen him. And mm-hmm. I was like, why are you hiding it? We saw it already. <laughs> I was like, it's not a secret anymore. No. We know, so you could just show him now. Then his yeah. eyes turn red by the end, which actually that... Is scary. That was actually a little creepy. I think the villain looked very good. The villain could have worked really well, and some of the magic that he does is some of the more creepy scenes in the movie, so they're like, they're like the better moments. And animation-wise, I'm like, this is probably why they made the movie, because... Disney was so out of control at this point. You know, like, they literally didn't have control. Like, I, I think their CEO had fallen asleep at this point. <laughs> so they were just out there making this crazy movie that took years to, pro- to produce. You know, they, they actually were going to release this movie in 1980, and it didn't get released till five years later. And that was after multiple times being rescheduled. Like, just they Just give took- up. They should have just given up. Given up. Given up. <laughs> I was expecting, like, better animation for how long it took, but sometimes it's good, and that's, like, when the Horned King sequences come in, um, look very, they look very great, but, man, is he a lame villain. Yeah. Like, he doesn't really say much. He's portrayed by John Hurt, which was, like, one of the earliest instances of Disney taking a famous actor and putting him in a vocal role like this. They didn't really do that often back then. Uh, This was, like, one of the first times they did it. And he doesn't really do much for the performance. And Mm -mm. the way the dude dies... Is Is so slow and embarrassing. (laughs) Like, the wind is strong enough to take a man, and he's, like, going 0.2 miles per hour into the cult. I was like, oh. (laughs) It was, like, slow motion, and it was so awkward. The cauldron starts sucking everyone up after Gurgi sacrifices himself, so it's reversing the effects of what the Horned King just did pretty much only two minutes earlier, so... um, Exciting, riveting. Uh, but the Horned King's getting sucked in, uh, but he's also trying to take out the kid while he's at it. And I was like, yeah, kill that kid. I'm sick of him. But he, uh, the kid pretty much knocks him out of the way, and then the Horned King starts getting sucked in. And at that point, I got up, and I was like, this is stupid. Are you serious? That's how he's going to die. And it's funny because even as I was getting up and getting mad about it, um... It was still going. Yep. Because it's that slow. Mm-hmm. He's just like, no! Harry Potter. <sighs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, this is so boring. You know what? This is not... This is not the worst Disney film, I don't think. I can't imagine. It has been... What I, is the worst? Of the ones we've watched so far, that this is probably the worst. No. Not of the ones, like all of them. Um, of the Disney Studios canon, the ones we'll be doing, I can imagine that Chicken Little might be a little worse. That's not your opinion or everyone My else's? opinion. I'm saying I could imagine it being Chicken worse. Chicken Little is not bad. We'll get to it. But I'm just saying, I from what I remember and what I hear and what people say and how I'm integrating with what I remember, I'm like, mm-hmm. I think they're right. But this movie... The one thing it doesn't really have, because I'm like, I'm all up for a bad movie that's at least, you know, so bad it's entertaining. Not even, like, sometimes so bad it's bad. This movie... It's not. Well, this is the worst kind of bad, where it's just boring. Yeah. I am going to leave this movie with pretty much nothing. Like, I... I, The characters are bland. They're not even, like, just boring. They just, like, irritate me. And they're very intermingled with what you've seen in the past. Like, we were even referencing some other movies while watching it like oh this is kind of like this movie this is kind of like that movie but at the same time it's weird because a lot of the character designs and the animation style doesn't feel like disney but not in a good way not like alice in wonderland where it was like this is so different but i can still tell the studio did this reminds me of what did the troll in central park movie that was don bluth it reminds me of that kind of stuff it did kind of feel like his animated movies if you've seen some of his work um he did thumbelina actually uh, and anastasia i know i love those and honestly it kind of did feel like that kind of animation um but i i don't know it just didn't feel very disney-esque and Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if that's because this isn't a movie that's been referenced a lot in later theme park rides or TV shows or anything. So it hasn't been like iconography that's been going back into my being thrown in my face constantly so maybe i'm like i don't associate it with disney but it really doesn't feel like a disney movie no disney movies are usually like happy and just like bright and this is just not ever just like ah, like never yeah. in it doesn't really mix can't well even at all. spit on my sentence <laughs> ah. the animation cells don't really mix well with the backgrounds at times some of the backgrounds are very ugly especially in the castle which is kind of the point but when you're just doing grays and blacks with animation cells that are also trying to be dark and the whole time right it's very unappealing to look at i don't mind that they did a darker movie i'm not asking that it has to be happy good times no, that's follow. why i feel like it doesn't seem like a disney movie it doesn't need to follow the Disney structure, but man, you gotta at least get something. I mean, it's gotta be. It's still a kids' movie in the end. It's still a family mm-hmm. movie. I know you're trying to be darker, but you know, I know you don't like Return to Oz, but I'm sorry, but that movie's at least entertaining. There's a plot in that Excuse movie. Me, no, There's something sorry. going on. This movie doesn't really have anything going on, and it's like they pretty much proved themselves wrong anyway because they tried to go so off the rails with this one, and they're like, let's be completely different. But at the same time, they didn't really do much with the characters or uh, villains or anything really different. It was all stuff you've seen before, but bland. But then you got, a couple of years later, they did The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, mm-hmm. Aladdin. Like, all these movies that pretty much followed the structure. Yeah. And they all worked. And that kind of showed, like, hey, the structure sometimes works. So do the structure... But make everything else different. But this movie was like, let's not do the structure, but let's make everything else kind of the same. Like, the characters are very similar to other previous characters. And, yeah, it just... And I can't imagine what people who like the books even think of this. But I don't even want to get into that, because I'm, I'm assuming they're disappointed. <laughs> well, the author wasn't, so... Maybe, this, maybe it was being nice. <laughs> I can... I... Just because from reading re- reviews at the time, it seemed like it was a lot more split than it is now. Yeah. Now I just think very few people have seen it because, one, I thought it was pretty hard to ex- to access in general. And you've never even seen it, so that's a... It's, I mean, I've said before, like, the whole thing is, if it's on VHS and didn't really come out in the 2000s, there's a chance I haven't seen it. But the thing is, I had a lot of VHSs and a lot of the ones that maybe I didn't own, like 101 Dalmatians, I saw somewhere... Or at least remembered some points of it. But Black Cauldron was so outside of everything. No one owned it. Nobody really talked about it. And I can kind of believe that it's not really just Disney holding it back so no one experiences it. It's like, no, I think even if Disney threw it out there, people wouldn't be interested. Because there's there's nothing really there. I can see people liking dark aspects. I can see some people liking the fantasy aspects. It's Disney doing a fantasy film. You got the hiccups. I do. It's Disney doing a fantasy film um, during a bit of a fantasy resurgence. But what's funny is a lot of these fantasy movies were not doing well. The Dark Crystal came out. Return to Oz came out. Stop um, saying I'm that keep movie. Bringing it up. <laughs> um, like Labyrinth came out. Labyrinth is great. And oh, I'm trying to think. Willow came out. But a lot of these 80s fantasy movies that have a huge cult fan base now did not do well at the time Mm -hmm. as this one did not either but the only difference between this and all those other movies i just said is that this one doesn't have a blu-ray release (laughs) i mean it doesn't have a fan base really Mm -hmm. and it's so anybody i've actually met who really likes it so far and in between and even when they like it you've actually met somebody (laughs) not personally but it's so far and in between and even then it's very much like a well i like it (laughs) but I like it, but I don't love it. I uh, I don't... It's one that I, I know I'm going to forget about it immediately. I already did. <laughs> I don't remember anybody's names. And we watched it five minutes ago. You know what you said? You thought the pig was very nice looking. The pig is cute. Why didn't... I still don't know if it's a girl or boy. Because the eyelashes on that pig says girl. <laughs> it's just... No getting back into that plot structure. What plot? I'm just like because I'm I'm rem- I'm remembering we forgot about talking about like even talking about the fairies or the witches, but I remember that it just kind of keeps changing its course. Like at one point you think he's gonna run away with the pig, and then 
run into different characters, but doesn't really do that. He gets caught, and you're like, oh, maybe it's going to be like a castle escape movie. And then they leave the castle real quick. Mm-hmm. And then they, I'm like, okay, uh, what is what is the movie then? And then they start meeting characters, so they meet the fairies, they meet the witches, and I'm like, oh, is it going to be kind of like, you know, like the Odyssey now, where they meet all these characters along the journey? And then, no, they get caught again. And then I'm like, then they're in the castle, and I'm like, we were just here. I'm like, what? what is this movie? And then it's over. <laughs> the pig seemed like a main character and was gone halfway through. Cause... Don't worry, we'll take good care of your pig. And I'm like, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> why? Wait, why is the pig staying around? Why I know they did, said why. Why do we but... need fairies? We didn't need why a do lot we of need... that. Yeah, I don't know. I know when they were making the adaptation, they were trying to wrestle with trying to fit like 30 different characters into the movie. And my answer is, you could have just not. You could have yeah. made the cuts where necessary. <laughs> um, Honestly, can you tell me that old man's name? Either of the old man men. Men. Because <laughs> they look the same. I don't know. No. Did they ever say the one they were with 90% of the time? Okay. You know what his name was? What? Fluter Flam. When Fluter did Flam. they say that? You don't remember? Fluter Flam? Fluter Flam. Okay. John Huston, who's a famous film director, was the narrator of this movie, and I'm kind of wondering what did Disney have on that guy to do the narration <laughs> of the movie. Oh, man. I. He was bored at the time. Probably. <laughs> He's like, I'm done directing movies. I'll just do voiceovers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um... This is one of the worst, and I'm disappointed in saying that, but I'm not surprised. Mm-hmm. It's very much only famous now because they're like, this almost tanked the Disney company at the time. <laughs> this movie did very bad at the box office, and um, they considered it a personal sting to all the people who work there that the movie got beat out at the box office the weekend it was released by the Care Bears movie. They- that movie is actually scary, too. It has scary moments. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Okay, I almost said that while we were watching it. The castle looks like from the Care Bear movie. (laughs) Well, people were seeing the Care Bears instead of this movie that weekend, so you were right on track. Yep. Well, that's why I think it's funny, because it got beat out by them, and then Disney was like, never again. Why why is that embarrassing? Like, weren't they a big, big thing? The Care Bears? Yeah. It was, but it was the fact that it was an animated movie. Like, Disney never really got beat out by other companies animation wise like they were always number one um the only people that ever did shoot you know cause them trouble was at the time that movie and then some of the don bluth movies that came out later but that was very far in between and then disney held their ground until dreamworks came out and now and since the 2000s there's been so many animated studios it's kind of crazy to think at the time there was really only one and it was disney but every once in a while these other companies would be like we're gonna make a movie but they never had the resources or the money to really make them as beautiful or big as the disney movies and yet that weekend when the black cauldron which was like one of their most expensive animated movies they had done at the time like that it was like crazy budget it was taking way too long to make and they finally released it you think a movie they put that much time and effort into, or effort, I guess, but, like, got beat out by a movie that was just this typical, you know, cheaper, not Disney animation. People didn't go because it looked scary. Well, exactly. <laughs> I don't even know how you market this movie. You market it as a like, fantasy movie. Like, look at the movie. poster, and you're like, I want to take my kids to this. <laughs> well, even, like, it's it's being marketed as a fantasy movie, but none of the fantasy movies were doing well at the time. So, like, wh- what do you do? Yeah. You think they would have figured it out by then. I mean, Dark Crystal and Willow had come out beforehand, I believe. So, could, shouldn't you have figured it out? I guess because the movie was already in production. They had to finish it. Yeah. It started back in, like, the 70s, and it took them this long to make it. The last movie they made before this was Fox and the Hound, and it came out in 1981. That's a long gap to wait to release another movie. After this came out, they released Great Mouse Detective, Oliver and Company, Little Mermaid, Rescuers Down Under, Beauty and the Beast. Like, this is, like, pretty much every movie that came out after this was much better, and it kept getting better and better and better. And, Mm -hmm. like, this one, I think Disney, the company, is personally embarrassed by it. 
and that's a big reason as to why they've shut it out of the public so much because they that's why they're not releasing it. <laughs> they themselves don't like the movie, and I mean. Eisner, he was in charge of the company throughout the 90s, and I'm sure since it was the first movie that was released during his time there, and it did awful, I'm sure he's like, screw that movie, never again. Um, and Wait, what, what movie is that again? <laughs> he's like, I don't I don't. We never released that. a Black Cauldron. What are you talking about? <laughs> that, was, that was somebody else. You know what's funny is that the studio actually lost the rights to the Chronicles of Perdain, but they, they've actually since have bought them back. In 2016, why? Um, some people were theorizing it was going to be a live action remake, you know, like in like what they've been doing with these others. But I don't think they're going to have any connections to the, to the animated movie. Why would they do that? I think they want to make like a either a movie series or a Disney Plus TV show Are they based on to it. Redeem themselves. I think so. <laughs> I think it's the fact that I think their th- their thinking is. Nobody else is going to do it. The rights to it is cheap. So let's just try to do it good. And people who have read the book will be interested, which is going to, at this point, be very far and in between. But, hey, we can at least bring up the fact that it is the Black Cauldron and that fan base will be brought in. I think that they're so successful, they don't need to worry about this movie anymore. (laughs) Well, it's fantasy movies and TV shows do better now. Yeah. So it's probably a good time to do it. My whole hope is that if it happens... It's good. They'll, well, yeah. That'd or be nice. better, at least. That'd be nice. If it even happens, that would be nice if it was good. <laughs> but I think they'll finally release this movie on Blu-ray if they do it. I would like yeah. the Blu-ray. I would like the unedited version. I don't think it'd be better. No, not at all. But I'd like to see these so-called scary sequences that got cut out. <laughs> um You know what I really liked about the movie? Mm-hmm. Besides a couple of the animated moments and the, the pig. horned king design and the cute pig. Mm-hmm. Dino do. <laughs> mm. um, I like the music. I really did like the music. I didn't even notice it. You can That's notice bad. it when it's just a horned king walking around. It's very noticeable. The music was done by Elmer Bernstein, and he did the music for Ghostbusters. And if you listen to Ghostbusters in this movie, which came out a year later, uh, they sound very similar. Mm. Um, that happens with a lot of for like, a lot of composers. those like composers, yeah. yeah. He, um, I think that's his like his most famous movie. Probably is uh, this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, Ghostbusters. He also did like uh, the Ten Commandments, To Kill a Mockingbird, um, The Great Escape. Oh, that's a good tune. Dun, dun. Bum, 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 I never heard that. Well, ooh, I made a weird noise now. with my mouth. It's great escape. Um, <laughs> but you know, what you were gonna say though, it, this is, movie is his most famous score. I mean, it's not, <laughs> but it actually was good enough to have a re-release. Like the album's actually been re-released, and they released like the full tracks and everything because the music is actually very much beloved. Like a lot of people really like the music of the movie. Um, I'm almost wondering, I'm, I, like, maybe that's part of the reason that it has a cult fan base is that the music's that good. I really like the music. There's movies I like out there that I pretty much only like because of the, the music. I love the third Pirates of the Caribbean movie pretty much only because of the music. I kind of was, I wish there'd be a way to make this movie where you just keep all the characters silent and just have the music playing because the music's good. But some of those scenes, like you said, you they just... You could just get the album then. You could. <laughs> Um, do you have anything else to say about The Black Cauldron? No. Probably will never watch it again. It took me 21 years and I don't <laughs> see it in my future. Maybe I'm, if they redo it. I'm getting this not. close to being a Disney completionist. And this movie's got me one step closer. <laughs> I'm not... I mean, I, I'm not even going to say I'm glad I saw it. Because, oh, Disney, I like to see everything they've done. Because... God, it's like it, it still feels like I've never seen it. Like I, I pin yeah. me in a corner in five years and ask me if I've seen this movie. I'll be like, I don't know. Even though I've done this whole podcast for yeah. it, I'll be like, ah, maybe I'll listen to this podcast. And be like, I don't remember any of this. As I'm talking about it, it's like fading out of my brain right now. <laughs> you know what? Uh, that was the Black Cauldron. So we are not fans. I'm sorry. We're not going to join that crowd. Uh, why don't we do the randomizer for the next what? movie? I always get so nervous. Because you want to be tangled? I just tangled Hercules. I thought, Mulan. I thought we were pretty worried about this one. Yeah. So we got through this. 
Let's see what's next. Mm. Ooh. That's a that's a later number. Uh, oh, you're gonna be happy. What is it? It's Princess and the Frog. I love that movie so much. You don't like it very much. I don't love it. Ugh. Um, it's that okay. It actually does have really good music in it too. I've I've only seen it the one time with you because that was actually one I had never seen and we watched it together. Um, yeah. I'm so excited. I'm excited to watch it again. Me too. Let's watch like it right anymore. now. Nope. <laughs> I've gotten enough of my Disney today. No. Nah, I can never say that. By the way, last time they actually could hear the train. So really. Mm-hmm. And I think we said in the podcast they can't hear the train. The rest of the podcast can't hear the train. Huh. That's annoying. I'm so excited. Well, that was this episode. We'll see you next time when we talk about Princess and the Frog. This movie almost killed the Disney company. Well, Princess and the Frog, it kind of killed 2D animation. (laughs) Not on purpose. And I would actually more blame Disney for it than the movie and how it did. But, uh, yeah, that was Black Cauldron. Thanks for listening, everyone. And we'll see you next time when you wish upon a star. It's the Black Cauldron. Disney's 25th animated masterpiece is coming to video for a limited time only. It's our only chance. Share this timeless classic with your family. It's the fantastic enchanted adventure you'll want to add to your Disney collection. Own the Black Cauldron, rated PG. Now in collectible chromium FX packaging.